violence and other kind of violence. What's good YouTube? It's a Black Gen Z mindset. Make sure you go ahead and like, comment, share, subscribe. Let's get into the video. The Bronx are now looking for a killer after two people were found dead inside a burning car on Monday morning. Law enforcement source tells Fox 5 authorities are now investigating it as a double homicide. All right, Richard G. Kobus live in Pelham Park Bay, Pelham Bay Park rather, with what we're learning about the case, Richard. Lori, see, forgive the rain while we tell you this story, but it is so heinous, so disturbing, and somewhat shocking to learn that it happened here, right near an exclusive golf course along Shore Road in the Pelham Bay section of the Bronx, the Bronx Westchester border, where we reportedly see two charred bodies inside a car. Police confirming it was a double homicide. Damn. Double homicide. Burn the body. God, I mean, these super grooms will go to any lengths any lengths to get away with murder these super gremlins are on demon time but one where they didn't know what happened with these two people before they were shot and then their car set on fire it happened near Pelham Bay Park on the Split Rock Golf Course in the Bronx. Police are not confirming the identities of the two victims as they wait confirmation from the medical examiner. But reports claim that one of the victims is 19-year-old ex-college basketball player Jesse Perea. The other victim is believed to be his girlfriend, Nikki Wong. A vigil mm. was held for Wong today in her native Chinatown where mourners left flowers and candles remembering the teen. Stop Asian hate. Stop Asian hate. Stop Asian hate. Both Perea and Wong were reportedly shot before their vehicle was set ablaze. Their body so burned, police initially couldn't tell what their gender was. Mm. Perea reportedly played hoops for Genesee Community. Wow, did you hear that? Police couldn't even tell what their gender was. How is that for the transgender community? Okay? I mean... These these super gremlins are are, are, are are turning people LGBT community posthumously. Community College in upstate New York and on the school website, they hail him as a six foot tall all star who averaged four point six points a game in the 2018 to 2019 season. Um, no disrespect to the brother, but but four point six points a game isn't an all star. But rest in peace to the brother, man. Go off. Now, police aren't releasing a motive for this or even identifying a suspect at this point. They're not even saying whether or not the medical examiner will release the names. They're going to wait before they do so. In the meantime, though, we're going to work the details and we'll provide you with them. This is a story, though, a tragic one in a most unlikely place. That's the real story here. We're live in the Pelham Bay section of the Bronx. Richard Giacomas, Fox 5 News. Lori. All right, Richard, thank you. I'm here on the corner of MLK and Frederick Douglass, where a shooting just took place. And as you can see, it's a pretty rough area. So I'm basically risking my life reporting on this madness. So make sure you do me a favor and hit the subscribe button. Like the video, hell, share the video. And make sure you go ahead and leave a comment down in the comment section to continue the discussion on how we can find solutions to all this sun violence in the streets. I'm Jen Quavius Jackson, here live, reporting from Atlanta, Georgia, BGZM News 17. Gruesome discovery this week in the Bronx. Two people found murdered in a torched car. As CBS 2's Andrea Grimes reports, police sources say one of those victims was an innocent young man unknowingly swept up in a series of gang-related attacks. Mm. Police sources believe he was in the wrong place at the wrong time. Former college basketball player, 22-year-old Jesse Paria, found murdered with his friend Nikki Huang in this burned-out car in the Bronx early Monday morning. Sources say both had been shot and the car was set on fire. 
Wang's family owns Walung Kitchen on the Lower East Side, where customers have been stopping to pay their respects at a growing memorial. I was like in shock. I feel so bad for the parents, you know, because now they suffer. She was just this great kid that worked there with her folks. Police sources say Huang had no criminal record, but alleged she did have an affiliation with a gang. They say she. Wow. That's crazy. <clears throat> So the female was affiliated with a gang, and that's all it took. We we don't usually see that. We usually say, hey, it was probably the guy. He was involved in some things and got the woman swept up in it. But they're saying Wong was involved in the gang so or involved with the gang. Maybe not in it, but had gang ties. And this is how dangerous it is. To affiliate yourself with these gangs, I'm telling you guys, it's not a smart move. He was robbed last Sunday and told some of her gang member friends. Police sources believe that robbery set off a chain reaction of tit for tat gang related violence. A deadly shooting in Alphabet City, followed by two people shot on Pike Street on the Lower East Side, then another shooting in Queens. And finally, Paria and Huang. Police suspect they were kidnapped, then murdered. Their bodies left in the burning car. Mm -hmm. Sources say Paria of the Lower East Side has a clean record and had nothing to do with any of this. It's too early and saying um, the city's getting a little too loose. So far. <laughs> city's getting a little too loose. No, it's the community that's getting a little too loose. No arrests have been made. On the Lower East Side, Andrea Grimes, CBS 2 News. Gang violence and other kind of violence.